Hi, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack, and in this podcast, we're going to review the arteries and arterioles. An artery is any blood vessel that carries blood away from the heart. They're similar to other blood vessels in that their wall contains the three layers, the inner tunica interna, the middle layer, the tunica media, and the outermost layer, the tunica externa. But they have a thicker tunica media with abundant muscle and elastic connective tissue. Arteries also display a high level of compliance, meaning that they can expand or stretch without damage as high-pressure blood passes through them. And in fact, it is the tunica media that provides the arteries with their major functional properties of elasticity through the elastic lamina with the elastic connective tissue. Elasticity refers to the ability of the artery to stretch and then recoil back to its original diameter. And the smooth muscle of the tunica media provides for the artery's contractility the ability of the smooth muscle fibers to contract and decrease the diameter of the vessel. And the arteries are also different in their structure based upon their major functions. There are two main types of arteries in this regard, the elastic arteries and muscular arteries. Elastic arteries have the largest diameter and are the largest arteries in the body but have thin walls relative to the vessel's overall size. The largest are as thick as garden hoses. The smallest are as thick as your fingers. They have well-developed internal and external elastic laminae and a thick tunica media with an abundance of elastic fibers called the elastic lamellae. Their main function is to keep blood flowing as the ventricles relax. They are also called the conducting arteries because they also carry blood from the heart to smaller, medium-sized arteries. Examples include the aorta and the pulmonary trunk, the two major arteries leaving the heart, and the main branches off the aorta, the brachiocephalic trunk, the common carotid, and the subclavian arteries. When blood is ejected out of the ventricles, it first flows through the elastic arteries, which can handle this high-pressure blood. The walls of these arteries are able to stretch, and their elastic fibers can temporarily store this mechanical energy as potential energy. In this regard, they act as a pressure reservoir. When the elastic fibers recoil, the potential energy is converted into the blood's kinetic energy. This helps propel the blood through the arteries after the ventricles have finished contracting. Muscular arteries are thicker walled arteries with a medium sized diameter, having a tunica media with large quantities of smooth muscle fibers but less elastic fibers compared to the elastic arteries. They have thicknesses ranging in size from the diameter of a pencil to as narrow as a string, with their thicker wall making up about one quarter of their diameter. They have a thicker internal elastic lamina, but a thinner external elastic lamina, which limits their ability to recoil. The abundance of many layers of smooth muscle gives the muscular arteries better control of blood flow, permitting more vasoconstriction and vasodilation. The smooth muscle can stay contracted, creating a state of vascular tone that helps maintain blood flow and vessel pressure. Examples of muscular arteries include the brachial artery in the upper arm and the radial artery in the forearm. They are also called distributing arteries because they branch extensively, delivering blood to the body organs and peripheral limbs. 
As the arteries branch throughout the body, multiple arteries are responsible for delivering blood to the body's tissues. An anastomosis is a joining together of two or more arteries that are delivering blood to the same area. These are helpful for providing side routes or detours called collateral circulation for blood to reach an organ or body region if the path of blood flow in an artery is blocked. Not all arteries form anastomoses. Some end directly at an organ without branching. These arteries are called end arteries. And if blood flow is blocked in one of these arteries, the part of the organ that is on the receiving end of that blood flow is at risk of dying through necrosis. The arterioles are microscopic arteries that deliver blood to the capillary beds located around the body's tissues and organs. They are incredibly abundant, numbering about 400 million. Their tunica interna is thin, and their internal elastic lamina is fenestrated, meaning it contains small pores. Their tunica media contains one or two layers of smooth muscle arranged in a circular fashion around the vessel. We can see it shown here on this illustration as these small little smooth muscle belts that surround the arterial wall. The arterial becomes narrow in a terminal region called the meta-arterial as it ends and meets the capillaries at the capillary junction. The smooth muscle cell located most distally at the meta-arterial capillary junction forms the precapillary sphincter. This is a muscular valve that can contract and relax to regulate blood flow into the capillary. The tunica externa is made of areolar connective tissue in the arteriole with a generous supply of sympathetic nerves that help adjust the arterial diameter to regulate their blood flow. Arterioles regulate blood flow by regulating resistance which is the opposition to blood flow as the result of friction created between the blood vessel wall and the blood itself. They are also called resistance vessels because of this ability. When the arterial diameter gets smaller during vasoconstriction, friction and resistance increase, which reduces the flow of blood into the capillaries. This also increases blood pressure. When an arteriole relaxes through vasodilation, friction and resistance decrease, and the flow of blood into the capillaries increases. This also decreases blood pressure.